Hello and welcome to episode 133 of the Clean Energy Show. I'm Brian Stockton. I'm James Whittingham. This week, small modular nuclear reactors will not solve climate change. This in spite of the fact one powers Brian's $1,700 espresso machine. It was only $1,400. Oh. Loblaws has deployed fully driverless trucks on city streets in Toronto. There is still a human in the passenger seat, just as a courtesy so other drivers have someone to give the finger to. That's even a bigger bargain considering it has an SMR in it. We reveal the stupidest place in North America, and it's not wherever Donald Trump is. The upcoming Tesla Cybertruck will work as a boat for short periods of time. If it floats, maybe it can toss a lifeline to the Tesla stock price. Ooh, all that and more of this edition of the Clean Energy Show. Brian, we also have this week my... Uh, my first repair to my Nissan Leaf. It's 10 years Ooh. old. The green community that survived Hurricane Ian and kept the lights on. India's homegrown $10,000 EV. And in spite of supply chain constraints, EV sales are back on track where they need to be by their 2030 benchmark for global warming targets. And Brian and I welcome the long-awaited third-party charging to a much-needed location where we live. And it has soft-serve ice cream. Mmm. Wow. That's I fantastic. could get into charging. Long <laughs> charging sessions with lots of ice cream. All right. So update on my house. We spray foamed the ceiling in our kitchen. And it was like super messy and dusty for about a week. But uh, the drywallers have finished. So that's now all sealed up. It's uh, So very... drywallers, they have to keep coming back and back over and over again, don't they? Yeah. Like they don't have to spend a whole day. They come. They do some mudding. They have to let it dry. Then they come back and sand, do a bit more mudding. So the whole thing took about eight days, which wasn't too bad. Um, but the kitchen was kind of closed off with sheets of uh, plastic. And so we had kind of limited access to our kitchen, which was annoying. But that's now all done. And then next week, they're going to do the other half where the living room is. And uh, so it continues. So we'll have a very well insulated ceiling, uh, which is great. Did you uh, eat out a lot? We did a lot of door dashing and uh, that kind of thing. Yeah. What's your favorite during that time period? <laughs> What's my uh, bar burrito? I'm a big fan of bar burrito. What kind of food is that? Well, you know, Mexican burritos and tacos. So, what specifically did you eat? I need to know. Oh, a ground beef burrito. Ah, ground beef burrito, classic. <laughs> nothing too fancy. Nothing. Yeah. Uh, nothing too unusual. So, but you're a taco time fan. But you like that? Tell me about that. Yeah, I think Barbaritos, it's it's a little bit more like real food. Um, oh, really? You know, How much does it cost? Taco Time is very fast foody kind of thing, but... How much more expensive would you say it was? Mm, not 20%. Yeah, maybe I should try it. They have multiple locations yeah. or just one? No, multiple locations. Let's do it. Barbaritos. Yeah. Wow, we could use a sponsorship on the show too. <laughs> Please reach out, Barbarito. So uh, I got my bivalent vaccine. Oh, I have another one. Milu, Vietnamese place. I just, it's been here a while, but I just discovered it. Fantastic Vietnamese, you know, uh, vermicelli noodle bowls. Love it. Amazing. How did the vaccine bring that to mind? Uh, I'm always thinking about food. Yeah. So I guess we both got the bivalent vaccine. Is that what's... Yeah, yeah. I, I had a lot of side effects. I was... I might still be feeling it after a week. I mean, it, 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 it uh, oh, that's, I mean, it was mainly one day, but it was, yeah. you know, I kind of felt good the second day, but then I, when I actually did something and when I mean did something, I mean, go to the fridge or something. Yeah. I didn't have a lot of stamina. Like it wore down fairly quickly. It's a good thing I wasn't, you know, employed or something. Yeah. Or doing a <laughs> podcast. No, I had mine Monday and then Tuesday morning I slept all morning. And then I had a couple of meetings in the afternoon and I, I felt a bit better, but was still tired. And now today it's uh, Wednesday and I, I don't feel any. I mean, it wasn't terrible, but I, yeah. I, I mean, it was a good day to just, you know, load up on Tylenol and, and watch Netflix or, you know, something like that in bed. Because I, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was just wiped me out and, and, you know, didn't feel great. So uh, yesterday, these, we had wonderful news because... We've talked about the two cities in the province where we live, Regina and Saskatoon. They're two and a half hours away. My son is up there now, coming back on Friday. 
and he's going to school there. We make lots of trips. You make lots of trips. You make more trips yep. than most people do I up there. It, yeah. And it's a great, it is, it's, it's a stupidly great city. Yeah. It's just, I don't know if I've told this story before, but once I was doing a Madly Off in All Directions, a CBC radio comedy series, a one-off where I was guesting on stage at the Broadway theater in front of 500 people with my comedy partner. And we naively, we, we both grew up in Regina, the sister city kind of to that city. And we said, we're from Regina and the whole place booed us. <laughs> and I mean, why? Why would they do that? I had no yes. idea that they hated us just because we have the center of government here. I mean, they have everything else. It was a beautiful no. city. And my assessment of the situation is the people in Saskatoon have a rivalry with Regina, but the Regina people don't care. We, I've always considered them superior. Why would they care? Why would they not just pity us? <laughs> now they're much bigger. They, when I was a kid, yeah. they were smaller than us. That's right. So the halfway point is a town called Davidson, Saskatchewan, and it got a Tesla a V3 supercharger stalls a few years ago, right? Two, three yeah, years ago? Yeah, about three years ago which changed life for Teslas. People like you could easily go to Saskatoon and top up for the hell of it or, you know, use it in very cold weather when your range is reduced and give you yeah, security. And it was one of the reasons I bought my Tesla was it made that trip viable. But, but there was no um, third party charger there. Yeah, for three years. And nothing. we've been begging them, we're begging everyone online. I've been, you know, tweeting A&W who has, you know, there's these cluster of different businesses there uh, yeah. Tim Hortons, uh, the Esso Station, which is one thing, and a Dairy Queen. And then there's a, across the street, there's a, an A&W, which I sometimes go to. Have you ever, you've gone to the A&W. Surely oh, you've gone sure. there. You've probably done everything there. Mm -hmm. But up the road, there's a co-op gas station, and that's where the supercharger is. That's kind of uh, the Prairie Gas Station, one of the, you know, brands that also run grocery stores. Uh, so they have that, but they're, they just announced yesterday that is they're getting the um, the flow chargers, which are 100 kilowatt. Before these gas stations had uh, different branded uh, chargers, which were 50 kilowatt, and they were always broken, like always. Yeah, the co-op branded ones. Yeah. So apparently, these uh, flow chargers are, I'm told by the EV Association, a lot more rock solid because it's something we talk about on the show all the time: is the reliability of charging non Teslas like non-Tesla Charlie networks are terrible. And yeah. Yeah, I hear that all the time, especially in the States. It's it's no different. Uh, so I I, <laughs> I I naively expressed regret online yesterday that I wished it was at the place where I go, which is the A&W, and, and I don't go to the Tim Hortons, but it seems like I might because I yeah. enjoy the Tim Hortons donut shop in Regina. And I, I found out that the, the EV people have been trying really hard for years, you know, behind the scenes to do something. And I'm not supposed to talk about what went on, but I'm very happy that the co-op is in charge, Brian. But I, I also made a joke online. I said, you know, when I said that I wish, why, why isn't that this other place? They said, are you disappointed? And I said, I'm not disappointed. Uh, you know, the co-op uh, responded to me and said, are you disappointed? I said, no, but I will be reviewing your pizza. Um, thoroughly. Uh, they said they welcomed it. Uh, then they offered to give me free pizza. <laughs> so, but is it a review if they give you free pizza? I mean, is it <laughs> is it an honest review if you get something it's, for free? I mean, as a food, as a clean that. energy food critic, I should be, um, you know, going in there in disguise or something. Yeah. That's just the way it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is, uh, this is great. And I, I should add too. So, uh, Tesla has finally made the CCS adapter available for Tesla vehicles in North America. So 99% of the time, if you've got a Tesla, you're going to charge at a Tesla station and there's lots of them, but, uh, other cars use the CCS connector and the adapter is finally available in North America. So if I were stuck sometime and the Tesla supercharger wasn't working, I could get this adapter and charge at the flow or charge at the co-op or whatever. Uh, anyway, I went to order one online and it said, oh, sorry, your car can't use this yet. We're going to do a retrofit next year. So cars built before a certain date don't are missing something that the CCS adapter doesn't work. So uh, my car was built just before that date. So doesn't sometime it... next year, there'll be a retrofit available and then I'll be able to buy one. So they didn't sell it to me. They're probably trying to control the number of these that, that go out. And since they know that my car can't use it, they, they wouldn't sell it to me. 
How old is your Model 3? It's about two and a half years old. Two and a half years. Wow, time flies. That's a quarter of a decade, Brian. <laughs> it, yeah, it's really, it really has, yeah. I, mean, I guess we had just started the podcast, I think. Oh, right, that. that's true. It was a couple months into the pandemic, and they did a... A touchless uh, delivery to you. Touchless delivery. But I'm yeah. not done with the Riverbend Co-op in yep. Davidson because uh, I asked them, I was in a, a discussion with my son who's going through there on Friday, as I said, if they have fresh donuts because the co-ops are known for great donuts sure. at their grocery stores. Yeah. And uh, especially in small towns, they're somehow better in small towns like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, my wife's small town of towns. Ladina, Saskatchewan, has... Is, Maybe the best donuts in Saskatchewan outside of the gourmet shops. So anyway, I asked them if they did, and they said no. But for you, though, I can say we are discussing it. So <laughs> now they are discussing it at the highest yeah. levels in the boardroom of the Davidson Co-op, uh, whether to bring in fresh baking from the grocery store inside town. Uh, and they said, well, give us a heads up when you're passing through. At least we could do is get some donuts to the gas, boy for, gas bar for you. And everyone is just so happy that, you know, because without the co-op, we would not have charging in Davidson. Yeah. There was no other possibility to do it. Uh, no one willing to do it. So this is incredibly important to EV adoption for people who not only live near there, but live anywhere else, or you're traveling through the province in that direction. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm incredibly grateful to them. And Matthew Pointer from the Sask EV Association says, this is arguably one of the most important charging locations in the province. So Brian, what I did, I made them a commercial. Okay. <laughs> I made the Riverbend Co-op in Davidson a commercial because they deserve it. And here it is. Come to the Riverbend Co-op Gas Bar in beautiful Davidson, Saskatchewan, conveniently located on scenic Highway 11. Enjoy our pristine citrus-scented washrooms as you stop to charge your Tesla at one of our lightning-fast superchargers. And for our non-tech industry friends, we are pleased to announce 100-kilowatt flow chargers coming in January. If you're still driving a gas guzzler, be assured that we here at Co-op sell only top-tier gasoline, made to the highest Canadian standards. While you're here, satisfy your cravings with fresh cut veggies and sandwiches lovingly made at our grocery store just for you or twist it up with a smoothie by mixing a slushy soft drink of your choice with ice cream why pee anywhere else the riverbend co-op in davidson more than a gas bar it's a heavenly oasis on the long road home this commercial is not going to the riverbend co-op flow chargers coming early 2023 not responsible for ice cream trips on your full leather seats yeah <laughs> so there you go nice. free commercial for the riverbend co-op uh, I'll put that online too in video form. Thank you, Riverbend Co-op, for being good people. Yeah, in Davidson, Saskatchewan, they still had a newspaper as a as of a couple of uh, years ago, and they were having a contest to give away the newspaper. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, I, I considered it. <laughs> yeah, and you were supposed to write a letter, and the, whoever writes the best letter would get the newspaper. I don't know whatever happened with that. Maybe yeah, somebody knows. We'll we have, have to Google that. We have a lot of local people listening. Um, okay, another personal news, uh, the leaf I had to take in to get fixed because I determined uh, for a long time now, almost a year, uh, that I had this tire noise and I thought it was because my original tires were wearing out. They were becoming bald and I thought, okay, no tread, they're becoming noisy. Bought new tires, but they were cheap. They were half the price of the tires that you're supposed to buy. And okay. so I thought, okay, well, it's a bit better, but it's still pretty noisy. And then I get noisier and noisier. So I, I determined through online sleuthing that it's my bearings, my wheel bearings and my front left wheel. And because it, it gets noisier when you steer in one direction than the other. So I, I did that and I, I, but there's no place, my, my Nissan dealership doesn't service EVs. And I looked up on how to do this repair and yep. you do have to kind of take a, one of the EV motor drive components out of the wheel hub because it's a whole, mm. not just the actual little tiny bearing, but a whole hub of bearings that has to be yeah. replaced. And you need specialized torque tools in order to do this. And I considered it, but then I thought, no. And uh, anyway, I got the, the price from a place called OK Tire on Park Street in Regina because they are certified. They actually sent their people away to uh, the United States to get training in servicing EVs and hybrids. Uh, whereas the one Nissan dealership we have here and even several around us don't do, they're not certified to do EVs, yeah. even though they, you know, Nissan sells the Leaf for 
well, my car is 10 years old and 12 years ago, they started selling them. So I, it was frustrating, but I, I took it there on the advice of others and I wasn't happy with how it went because they, it's $1,400 for the front two hubs. And I thought it was just one hub, but they say, oh no, the other one's going to be making noise as well. And they also, they charge you like 200 bucks just to diagnose things. Okay. You know, it could be $200 to diagnose it, but then they diagnose everything on your car and give you a big <laughs> printout to make sure that everything else is okay. And they don't need to spend money fixing it of your money. Uh, so that's complimentary, but you know, the diagnose, the problem is up to 200. So, so I, it's just BS and I hate dealerships and I've, you know, I, I can't afford it. So I'm in a pickle because my kid, my youngest is going on a trip, a school trip to Quebec because we sent the first one. And as soon as we send the first one somewhere and my wife, by the way, wanted to send up to Uruguay was it Ecuador is Ecuador to the, you know, yeah. the ecological things out there. And I said, we do this, it's it's twice as much as you think it is because we have to send the other kid. There's no way of not yeah. sending the other kid. You know, it doesn't work that way. So whatever you do for one, you do for the other. And yeah, and so we're doing it for her now. And, you know, we have to get her to raise money, but they don't raise very much. And it's going to be a hard economical year. Bad timing, that's too bad. And I'm giving away free commercials to co-op gas stations. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, uh, that's that. The car is supposed to be done. The beautiful thing is I've lost the EV joy because it's noisy. It's it's yeah. not giving me the luxury. And I can't wait. I can't wait, Brian, to get that back. And But, you know, I also have to get more work done on it later. It's all related to tie rods and ball joints yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, and they send you little video clips, um, part of their app to do that, to show you the wiggle. It, it's always great when you can spend money and, and really notice a difference. Like it, that at least makes you feel better about it. Yeah. Like our, our ceiling in the kitchen, like it costs a fortune to do that. And all it does is look like it's supposed to. All it does is look like a ceiling. Yeah. You don't get any, uh, any satisfaction of it suddenly somehow being better. Right. So this it is, doesn't leak now. this is hopefully something that I will just, you know, fall in love with again. Um, but I, I started to fall out of love with car ownership because it's been a long time since I had to deal with car repairs because yeah. we've bought new cars and the leaf I've had for five years and I haven't done anything to it. Like it's just, you know, not even, no, there's no oil to change. There's nothing to break down. I did buy the new tires a year ago, but other than that, I haven't done anything and it's, you know. How just, many kilometers on it? Uh, about 115 or something like that. You know, it, it doesn't have fast charging. It was yep. a rock bottom price. So it's only been a city car for anyone. And, uh, yeah, but I, you know, my family's been asking me how long do I think it's going to go? And I, I don't see it not going indefinitely. Like it's, I don't yep. have any, any reason to believe it won't go indefinitely. But if you don't do the tie rods or something, then maybe the tires are going to wear out and. Well, the, the car could, <laughs> could crash. Uh, you know, things like that. Uh, one of the wheels could go. I've seen people do this on the roads. You know, their wheel just goes eh, all the way to one way <laughs> and you get it towed. And it's, I won't be using it on the highway. Let's put it that way. So, yeah, I, I just, it's frustrating. And I can see the joy of maybe a subscription service to a robo taxi one day where you pay 20 bucks a month and you never have to worry about car repairs because that is the biggest pain in the butt. That's why people buy newer cars in the first place. Yeah. No, that's the future for sure. I mean, yeah, that's so much simpler. You know, I, I've been talking about the pipeline plane that flies over my house, and then we got into it, and I had mentioned that there was a crash, uh, 13, 2013, and then there was one between our last two episodes of our podcast. Well, curiously, there's been no pipeline plane since that crash, so I... have I, I got to feel weird about that. Like, is yeah, that, are yeah. those, because I feel like I have a connection with them because I'm in yeah. my Speedo floating in the pool. God knows we've had some intimate contact. You've never <laughs> seen me in my Speedo. These people have, and now they're gone. Yeah. They're perished. Um, so I, I, I just feel, or maybe they've grounded pipeline planes or, or you know, I don't know. Maybe yeah. they've just, but on the other hand, on the flip side, Who's looking at my pipeline to see if it's that leaking? It's not being inspected. Yeah. So that's kind of, you know, concerning for me as well. So here's a bit of trivia for you. In the year my leaf was made, um, 2013, 130,000 EVs were sold globally that whole year, Brian. 
And yep. now more than that are being sold every week in the world. And that rate, wow. of course, is expanding rapidly. That's fantastic. That's great to hear. So my leaf is like almost, you know, <laughs> I've seen it referred to in, in videos on YouTube now by car reviewers as kind of like the Model T of EVs because it was yeah. the first mass produced. It was produced even before Tesla's Model S. Um, yep. So it was the, really the first mass produced EV in the world. So it's, it's, it's iconic. Maybe it'll be worth something someday. And I wanted to get to um, some updates to some stories that we've covered in the past. And we were talking about, uh, you know, hurricanes in Florida and Will Walker in Florida. He was happily charging his all-electric Chevy Bolt at a gas station charger while all the gas pumps were roped off because, not because of electricity, the gas station was out of gas. Yeah. And you can't just snap your fingers and get more gas in when there's a hurricane. So these places, and we found this in, Nova, in, in uh, the Maritimes of Canada when uh, Hurricane Fiona went through a couple of weeks ago, gas stations are out of gas because everybody wants their generator running and everything, right? Yeah. Well, this is another reason. Gas stations don't operate with electricity during these situations, but they often don't operate uh, when they do have electricity because they're out of gas. Yeah. So, but he had electricity there and he was happily um, charging away. So... He says, I can't count all the times that people ask me about uh, what do you do when the power goes out? So it's just a joke to people who own um, EVs. Yeah. Uh, the New York Times, Florida, the post-hurricane here, uh, Jerry Jaworsk waited for about six hours to fill up for cans of gas. And he was frustrated. Where's all the fuel, he asked. Every gas station or filling station was supposed to, under Florida law, have a generator prepared to go at all times, but that did not happen. Wow. And in a news conference uh, a couple Saturdays ago, Mr. DeSantis, or Satan as I like to call him, said 1.6 million gallons of fuel had been removed, pardon me, had been moved to southwest Florida, but he uh, acknowledged that some stations may not have had the electricity to operate their pumps. <laughs> Uh, I'm laughing. I, if you're in Florida, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at the whole freaking idea and stupid things that happen. You need both. You need the fuel and you need the electricity. And on the electric car side, you just need the electricity. We've been talking about India a lot over the course of our podcast episodes. And uh, we have concerns over the air quality and how great it would be for EVs to move in there. Well, Tata Motors... Uh, one of India's largest vehicle manufacturers has announced a new made in China, pardon me, a new made in India electric five-door hashback starting at around $10,000 US. And it only has a 19.2 kilowatt hour battery with only 3.2 kilowatts of charging. That's kind of what my car is now. It started at 24. Yeah. That's kind of your leaf range and, and charging speed. But get this, it's supposed to have a range of 250 kilometers. Yeah, well, they've made improvements since, since your car was made. <laughs> well, I'm thinking, A, it's pretty darn light, and it may not have yeah. an airbag and uh, or seat belts <laughs> or um, high-tension steel or anything to protect the person. I don't know. I'm being kind of cynical about it. Yeah, but as we've talked about, in you know, there's a lot of, like, two-stroke engine vehicles in India, small mopeds and motorcycles and stuff like that. And those things cause extra pollution. So if those kind of small vehicles, which is what this is going to sort of replace, uh, can go electric, this will go a long way to improving the air quality in India. So for around 14,500 U.S., drivers can upgrade to a 24-kilowatt-hour battery. That is what my car was new at. But it has 315, 315 kilometers of range and 7.2-kilowatt charging, which is twice of what my car does. So that's... Well, I don't know, man. Maybe I should go to India and buy a car. Parts will be hard to get. Let's get on with the show. Yeah, so uh, driverless trucks in Toronto. We have reported on this before, but there's sort of more updates for it. So um, there are level four autonomous trucks, which began in August after the Ministry of Transportation approved them for uh, after a, a big audit. So this is Loblaws, the grocery chain from Canada, and they've got five routes going between Loblaws retail stores and a micro-fulfillment center. So you can order your groceries online, go to this place and pick them up. And this appears to be moving the groceries from the stores to this uh, pickup center. So they've got five routes and five trucks. They are now driving fully autonomously. 
they do still have a human driver in the passenger seat. I'm not sure why he doesn't just sit in the driver's seat, just in case. Show but off. they say they, what's that? He's showing off. Yeah, they're showing off. Uh, but they say they have a 100% safety record so far. This has been going on uh, for quite a while now. Um, and the, the person in the passenger seat is just there uh, kind of as a courtesy and also from feedback from the de police, police department and the fire department um, they, who said in case they need to pull the truck over, uh, they wanted, you know, a human to interact with. And that <laughs> does make sense. Don't I mean, we all? Uh, so, um, and of course, these are electric and they can charge at sort of both ends of their trip. And that's what they do. And uh, they're planning to expand this to something like 15 trucks in the near future. So, um, yeah, level four autonomous trucks. So this is uh, geofenced. It can only go on these specific routes. Um, you know, they couldn't just snap their fingers and expand this to other markets or other cities. They've carefully mapped out these routes and the trucks take the same routes every day. But still quite remarkable that it is totally working and they've, you know, driven, um, you know, tons of miles with these things and 100% safe so far. Color me surprised. I, I, I'm actually quite surprised by that. Especially in, yeah. I, if you told me it was, you know, um, uh, Los Angeles docks or something, <laughs> yeah. uh, I would believe you. But I, I'm surprised it's Toronto. Yeah, Toronto streets can be kind of busy and crazy. That's an understatement and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the worst streets, worst traffic in North America. But you just start thinking about the math for this in terms of business. So not only are you saving on fuel because it's electric instead yeah. of gasoline or diesel, um, and then saving on the driver. And just imagine as this slowly rolls out and expands, the amount of money that can be saved by so many businesses. I expect your grocery prices to go down thanks to um, freedom of energy, the world like that. Let's hope. And I do use their service in our city. It's PC Express. How's that work? Uh, we, we, it works well. You order online, you pick up. We have had it delivered one time, so they will deliver as well. Tell me about the so, delivery, because I'm considering that. We've, we've picked it up through the pandemic a lot. Yeah, 15 bucks for delivery. Um, yeah, works fine. Two hours? I can't recall, but I think you can do it same day, yeah. I think Walmart's supposed to have two-hour delivery here. I mean... We're kind of in the woods here. We're we're not in the you know places that get things, mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the best of uh, what is available in the world. We're usually the last to get it, so that's kind of cool. All right, I have a update from the International Energy Agency, and EVs are now at thirteen percent of all new car sales globally uh, this year. That's world market share of new that's vehicles. That's fantastic. I didn't know we were there, there yet. That's a you know that is an inflection point, Mister Stockton. Yeah, we are. Toying with inflection rates here, uh, it's doubled since last year. So wow. that has not been happening. It's taken more than two years to double, a little bit more than mm -hmm. two years. Um, but now doubling in a year is, well, not, not two years, sorry. It's like 17, 18 months or something, something yeah. weird like that, like a year and a half. But now it's a year and it's we are on track, according to the IEA, IEA of... Uh, reaching you know the, when they did the uh, the paris climate accord we need to do this this and this to reach our climate targets well the number of evs on the road by 2030 was a checkpoint goal and they have saying that we are on track for it in fact we're better than on track areas not on track include improving the energy efficiency of building designs developing clean and efficient district heating that's when you hit you know, like a heat a neighborhood with one heating system, uh -huh. phasing out coal powered uh, generation, that's a little behind, and eliminating methane flaring, uh, shifting aviation and shipping to cleaner fuels, and making cement, chemical, and steel production cleaner. That's from CNBC. Yeah, so the transportation sector doing well, these other sectors not so well. Yeah, but it's encouraging because, you know, we live in a place where there's so much cynicism about it. Yeah, that's great. All right. Well, we have several Tesla stories this week. Uh, the first was, of course, they had AI Day 2022, where they had a big presentation, a basically a recruitment event. They're trying to convince people to come uh, work for Tesla and work on their artificial intelligence stuff. They uh, demonstrated the prototype of the Tesla bot 
Um, I didn't watch the whole thing because it was like three or four hours long. Yeah. I watched a condensed 20-minute version. So the robot doesn't do that much. So, no. you know, the, the stock market and, and casual observers were not Question too for you. Was the robot more human than Elon Musk? <laughs> yes. It was? Okay. Uh, but I don't know if, yeah, if you had any thoughts about the, the Tesla bot. Uh, I do. And I did watch a lot of it. And I f came away feeling pretty negative about Tesla and Musk and AI. Because... <laughs> You know, there, there was no nothing major announced. Uh, mm -hmm. The robots didn't impress a lot of people because uh, wh who's the company? I can't remember the... Uh, Boston Dynamics? Boston Dynamics, who's been making those robots that flip and dance, and yeah. they seem like years ahead. They're not humanoid, yeah. but do we need... What, what is the need of having a humanoid robot other than being creepy? Um, I, I don't care what the thing looks like that does my dishes. It can look like a scorpion for all I care. <laughs> Just do my <laughs> dishes, you stupid robot, and answer my door and, and brush my teeth. Well, I think it's the same principle behind like what they're doing with self-driving in the car. Like the idea behind the Tesla self-driving car is to replicate the human. So humans drive with eyes and a brain. So Tesla's taking that approach with their car, cameras and a computer, eyes and a brain in the car. So... My feeling would be that since the world is designed for humanoid form, that that's the most useful form for somebody who's going to do, you know, work. Well, are you going to test an FSD beta Tesla robot in your home and hope it doesn't break your dishwasher handle? Sure. I, if they want to send me one, I'll take it. <laughs> the interesting thing is they think that one day they'll sell them for $20,000. Uh, yeah, US. that's... Seems low. I don't know. If, does it? Does it, it, Brian? Does the thirty-five thousand dollars Model Three seem low to you? That never happened. It was sold for like a couple of weeks, I think. Yeah, and very frustrating. Why? Why announce these things? I, I just you have to have faith in in uh, you know their AI software for cars. And we're yeah. not at that point yet. We're having a lot of faith because things are dragging on so slowly. It's just a super long process. So, you know, this stuff is potentially decades away. So why? what bothered me about the event was they, they invited all their internet fanboys to it. So it became like a Tesla event, you know. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, Elon, you're a god. Uh, pre present your genitals. I wish to photograph them. You know, this, this is stupid. I, I just hate that stuff. And But it, it was the, the whole point of the event was to recruit because yeah. they want to bring on people to recruit. Uh, they need the best in AI people to to develop this product. It's a recruiting day. So yeah. why invite all the fanboys? I guess you get some free advertising that way. But it just seemed, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm pretty cynical about this. And I'm pretty cynical about Mr. Musk, who has uh, decided apparently to buy Twitter. Yeah, it sounds like that's going through. Yeah, And I'm not happy about that. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not happy at all. Twitter's my, I mean, Twitter's not golden it's but it's i i need somewhere to go brian i can't go on <laughs> facebook it's not safe it's it's killing the world and now you know he's going to put what's his name back on there the former potus and uh you know why couldn't why couldn't a hurricane have killed him you know why is it killing his people see him floating away on a piece of rock anyway i i don't understand like it's i just i'm worried i'm worried about the world and it, Twitter was, the world was quieter. It was quieter without him on it. And now he's yeah. going to be on it. And, it's, and all these horrible voices of uh, conspiracy and BS. And it, I don't know. I'm not happy with Musk. I mean, Musk is, is the guy I, I tout for saving the world because he, he, he puts a cyber truck on stage, smashes the window, and suddenly Ford is releasing, you know, electric trucks a couple of years later, right? I mean, they're in dealerships. They're, they're, say they're at dealerships around our province even. A lot of them have moved here, I'm told. But, you know, they're, they're actually, kudos to Ford for actually making some vehicles, eh? Because, you know, the, the Mach-E is like, I think the number two selling electric vehicle in North America. No, there's actually some EVs in stock around us. Uh, and it's mostly like, yeah, the Mustang and the F-150. So, um, yeah, the, the needle has moved. And I guess... We're well, at 13%. So we're at a great. weird time where they, they say they have the stock and they don't actually have it. 
Right. It's coming in. It's like it's coming in to somebody who's ordered it. So right. unless somebody cancels their order, and somebody did cancel their order for a Chevy Bolt, but it was an older one. Yeah. And I didn't want to take it. People were pointing me towards that. But um, yeah, I'm told there's a year wait list. But I mean, that even that's not bad for a truck, but uh, I don't know. What other Tesla news do you have? So uh, Mega Packs arriving in Hawaii, and I just wanted to mention this mostly because we had reported on the final shipment of coal going to Hawaii a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, their last shipment of coal for their coal-fired electricity plant, which they're going to close down. Well, it turns out at pretty much the same time, a whole whack of uh, Tesla Mega Pack batteries were delivered to Hawaii. Um, Hawaii's got a aggressive goal to get off fossil fuels. Um, I think they've got some time. I think it was like 20, 2045 they're going to be 100% green. Um, I have a feeling they might be able to do it sooner than that. But, um, you know, they have tons of solar. Hawaii has the highest amount of solar deployed per capita. And uh, they just need more batteries. And they are on their way to 100% uh, clean energy, which is great. Yeah. Uh, Tesla, I mean, you don't hear about non-Tesla companies making power packs. I know they exist because... They do exist, yeah. They're putting some up around us. I don't know who's making them, though. You don't hear about who's making them. I don't know. I mean, the the, the main battery makers are probably making them, like yeah. uh, LG and uh, what's the other one? Panasonic? Yeah, or CATL. Yeah, I have heard other brands and their storage solutions. I, I just don't know off the top of my head. Well, that's something to look forward to. It's pretty cool that Hawaii can do that. And, you know, most people disregard batteries. I say this all the time. They they yeah. they poo-poo them. Like, you, you can't power. I know it seems <laughs> far-fetched because there's, like, thousands and tens of thousands and millions of little AA-sized almost batteries, right, that power a grid? Come on. That's, that's science yeah. fiction. But they are doing it, and it, it works, and it, the, it meets the, the power fluctuations and saves them money, instantly saves them money. If you're a casual observer, it probably seems absurd, but, you know, to the casual observer, I often hear hydrogen as the solution. Yeah. And, uh, but solar, wind, and batteries, as we often say, that's all you need. It is all you need. Um, not for maybe air, airliners or stuff like that, but for yeah. a lot of things. And the Cybertruck, Musk has been talking about the Cybertruck as well. Yeah, I guess prompted by the recent um, hurricanes and flooding in Florida, that the Cybertruck will travel temporarily as a boat for approximately 1,100 feet. <laughs> really? Yeah. It'll operate as a boat. That's, that's Musk tweeted That's that enough out. to get through a flooded underpass. <laughs> yeah. So we have seen this before, like with regular Teslas and flooded underpasses, that they can do fairly well getting well, through a, a there were, we did have water. a guy in the EV Association who flooded his car in Saskatoon and... Uh, and other insurance times, insurance yes. claim, big fat insurance claim, battery Water gone. got in, ruined his battery. So it, it's certainly, um, and it's not an advertised feature, but this is now technically an advertised feature of the Cybertruck that it can operate as a boat for a short period of time. So presumably they're just thinking about this more. I, I don't imagine they were thinking about it too much with the cars, but um, now that they know that the the cars are fairly waterproof, they've, I guess, done a little bit of extra work and, uh, you know, Cybertruck will float for a while. Well, the Rivian R150 pickup truck, the all-electric pickup truck from them, it was supposed to do a meter and a half of water. Oh, yeah. And they didn't say for how long. They, yeah. But they said any more and it floats. So they didn't yeah. want it to float, floating back. Yeah, because then you lose control there, yeah. Well, what do you do in the Cybertruck? Do you take out well, a paddle? I mean, what do you... Too. I'm not sure, but they often show it with those big knobby tires. So it's possible the big knobby tires would give you a little bit of yeah. traction and steering. Give me the aqua tread when you're ordering tires, you know, like uh, <laughs> summer all season and water. Well, there was that Oceanic. one uh, aqua car. Somebody in town owns one from the, like in the 50s, somebody made a car that works Amphibious as a car, yes. It's a, yeah, yeah. It's a convertible, right? Yeah, it's a convertible. Somebody in town owns one and every once in a while drives it in our local lake. Which um, is uh, saying a lot. You go down there, you're a dead person because it's yeah. nasty water. And um, yeah, so it, it has technically been done before. I don't know, maybe they could add a little propeller on the back of the... Because that's what the aqua car has, like the one from the 50s. 
it has a little propeller at the back for when really? it's uh, floating as a car. Oh, yeah, wow. Well, as a boat. That'd be an option, I suppose. Maybe you could outboard it to your uh, trailer hitch or something and just sort of uh, put a yeah. propeller on back there. Yeah, that, that'd be great. Well, I wanted to talk a bit more about small nuclear reactors because... Uh, CBC had an article on it, and there's been, uh, well, there's always lots of stuff. And I'm, I'm always reading from people, um, you know, everybody loves SMNRs. You know, they, they love that. Except us. Yeah, I, I'm not against it. It's just not realistic. People, yeah. people love the new solutions. You know, mm. we'll solve climate change with this. This is great. I saw a video on it. I saw six videos on it. It's great. It's not great. Because you don't have, they don't exist. You can't go to Walmart and buy one. You can go to Walmart and buy a solar panel. You can go to Walmart and buy a battery. You can go to Walmart and even buy a wind turbine in some stores. Come on. What we have is all we need. And I'm not saying other things aren't good, but if they cost 10 times as much for one unit of electricity, and if you don't need them, then why are you wasting your time on it? Because our government, another government, and uh, the Ontario government as well are investing and they're going to waste all our money in these damn things, putting money into it. Cause it's, and it's also just delaying climate action. Yeah. So uh, here, here's something. This is uh, Suzanne O'Donnell. She is an adjunct professor with the University of New Brunswick and St. Thomas University also works with the Coalition for Responsible Energy Development. And she has been researching SMR specifically during the last two years, and she was asked, what do you think of Saskatchewan and your province looking at building a small modular nuclear reactor? And she says, there's a huge leap, she says diplomatically, there's a huge leap between having a design for an SMR and then getting to the point of having an engineer design where you can actually apply for a license to build one. The most advanced design for an SMR in the U.S. is called New Scale, and they've spent almost a billion dollars on the engineered design, and they just got a license to build it. It's another huge leap between building a prototype that might actually work in a laboratory to getting one that actually commercially works in the real world. Why then, she was asked, would four provinces be looking at them? And she says, I'd have to say that the decisions around SMRs at the federal level, and certainly at the provincial level, where they're all conservative provinces, are political decisions rather than based on science. From reading peer-reviewed science in three different countries, Canada, the U.S., and the U.K., it really doesn't make any economic sense. However, what we have happening here is very, very powerful industry, the nuclear industry, uh, that has a long history in Canada, and they have been lobbying like crazy to get these things off the ground because, unfortunately, nuclear power is hasn't been very successful financially, especially lately. So in New Brunswick, the Point La Pure uh, reactor has been a financial disaster for the province. It's put us $3.6 billion in debt. And that's what we have to look forward to in, in our province because of idiots. It loses. I don't want any more debt. I don't want <laughs> it. No, we got enough debt. My God. But making stupid decisions because you want to put off the climate action and, 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 and not make the woke left happy, then uh, you got to do what you got to do and waste all taxpayers' monies and you drive the provinces to the ground. So I'm, I'm mad about that. Mad, mad, mad. So it's just, it's bad. I don't like it. But I'll leave it at that. Uh, Okay, so um, I've got a story here from CP24, which is a news outlet in the Toronto area of Canada. And I thought this, it reminded me of the Apple story that we mentioned a couple of days ago, that Apple is working on uh, software for their phones that will sort of calculate the cleanest time of the day to charge your phones. Um, I don't know, it's just, there's just a lot of activity around smartening up the grid. And so what they're going to do in Ontario is pay some customers to run their air conditioning less as part of an investment in energy efficiency programs. So they're going to have networked smart thermostats in people's homes that can literally be controlled remotely by the power utility. So when they have these days when the grid is strained and everybody's air conditioning is cranked up, if you've agreed to be part of this program, you have one of these smart meters, they're going to creep up the temperature in your house, take away some of your uh, your nice cooling 
uh, you know, airflow from your air conditioner. And uh, if you've got enough homes in this program and enough people willing to do it, and they will pay you to do it, like there's an incentive to do it, you will, you will, they'll give you some money for this. They will just, you know, turn up your thermostat a couple of degrees and uh, you'll use less electricity for your air conditioning. And, you know, the more of these kind of smart grid strategies we can come up with, the more we can, you know, weather these uh, coming storms of, uh, um, you know, power supply as we kind of transition over into uh, all clean energy. Well, that's, again, I'm surprised. I'm surprised that yeah. Ontario is doing that. Uh, it's very interesting. It'll be interesting to see how it goes, what the uh, what they learn from that. It reminds me of the summer heat wave in California where they texted people or an emergency yeah. alert and they responded. Yeah. And yeah. they responded in times where they, they turned down their power because they said, if you don't, then we're going to have a power outage. I would rather have yeah. some power and yeah. maybe a couple degrees warmer in my house than no power at all. And that's another great tool to have. But just imagine if, you know, somebody at the California power commission just has a switch where they can just turn up everybody's air conditioning like just imagine how that would drop the the power going to the grid like instantly It'd yeah be amazing. i'm not sure what some people would like the government coming into their homes <laughs> uh, <laughs> but but you get paid for it but you get paid for it so that you're compensated for it. that's that's the thing but this is kind of the future that when we talk about smart grids we are also talking about you know homes where we can suck uh, a little bit of juice out of your EV for 10 minutes uh, yeah. just to balance the grid and you get paid for that and more than what it costs you to put that in. So yeah, there's all kinds of different things. And, and if this is one of those methods, then cool. No. And there was uh, some progress on that in the U S they, they introduced the bi-directional act. Right. It was introduced in the U S Senate to promote electric school buses feeding into the grid. So I don't think this is all kind of fully passed or anything, but as they expand to electric school buses, they're, you know, trying to work this into the infrastructure where all of these school buses can feed into the grid. So it's, it's nice to have some actual legislation uh, to support that. All right. Coming up in the show is the lightning round where we speed through the week's headlines in fast format. Brian, I've got a surprise new segment for you this week. What? It's called the Tweet of the Week. Oftentimes I see a great tweet that I like to highlight on the show. Yeah. Now, this is until I leave Twitter next week. <laughs> yeah. When Elon Musk takes over. So it could be a very short-lived segment. Uh, here it is. It says, you know who isn't in denial about climate change? The entire insurance industry. There will be entirely uninsurable areas of the populous places uh, near coast sooner than you think. This is from MMA, who works in the real estate industry and was retweeted by many of my climate um, follows on Twitter. So it's something I think about a lot. And Florida, of course, top of mind because of the recent hurricane. But Florida, you know, so many low lying areas in, in Florida. And you just got to wonder when the real estate prices are going to hit the wall and uh, people are going to have to retreat. It hasn't happened yet, as far as I know. But yeah, certainly. I think there is already some places that are, are uninsurable yeah. um, in, in flood-prone areas. And, you know, the insurance industry doesn't mess around. I know because yeah. my, my life <laughs> insurance just went up last week. It tripled for some reason because I hit a certain they, they age. They saw you eating the box of donuts and they're like, damn it. <laughs> they, heard, they heard me talking about Davidson gas station donuts and just <laughs> bingo. Uh, so my, my other tweet that I was considering had to, something to do with uh, a politician down there saying, well, we will rebuild. And then the other person said, why? <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, why would you rebuild a place yeah. that's destroyed by a hurricane? Do you think it's not going to happen again? I mean, these happen, they're happening more frequently uh, and more importantly, more powerfully and slower moving and more damaging the same hurricanes because of climate change. Brian, we've got a whole host of feedback this week. Sometimes the mailbag, empty. Dust bunnies fall out. Nothing there. Mm -hmm. You know, and then sometimes it just rains, rains feedback. So uh, I wanted to, to dip into it. Here's an email. It says, hey, guys, big fan of the show from Martinsburg, West Virginia, USA. 
Not all of us in Bum F Egypt are as narrow minded as our former commander in Cheeto when it comes to the environment. I didn't I can't swear on the show. You see, if I swear on the show, I have to change it to explicit. That's a whole lot of paperwork. <laughs> I can't do that. So just got an email from my power company asking if I was interested in enrolling in a new program they are starting up, which seems to be a solar collective. Do you think these types of programs, the page is very vague, have a place in the future for those who can't afford or non-solar friendly areas like us? Cheers, Tiran Mendes. Now, I looked at it um, and basically... If you, your household uses uh, X amount of kilowatts per month, you pay extra to have solar. To have clean power. Now, this is something that we did here 12, 15 years ago at my old house. Yeah, yeah. I would pay for extra money for clean energy credits. And they, we had wind back then and only wind. Yeah. We basically still do for the most part. Yeah. And a small amount of wind. And, of course, they sold out. So they stopped the program. They yeah. couldn't do it anymore, or that was their excuse. But you could pay a little bit extra on your power bill every month and know that, you know, you were getting clean power. Right. But here's my point. Clean power is cheaper than regular power. <laughs> yeah, right. So they, they, and they want to charge you shitloads. Sarah, I swore. <laughs> Crap loads of money more. And it's like, you know, 40 bucks a month extra just to have clean power, which is cheaper to them than it is to the coal power or whatever, you know, like in, in West Virginia, solar is going to be, you know, incredibly cheaper than coal. It's like, mm -hmm. it's been, it's displaced coal as, as the cheapest form of electricity by far. So my question is where... Will the solar fill, uh, facilities be located? Um, so they plan to build, own, and operate five solar facilities uh, located within West Virginia on property owned by the power company or its affiliates. Uh, they include a 26-acre <laughs> a reclaimed ash disposal site, uh, a 51-acre adjacent to the power substation, 27 acres of retired ash disposal site. This is all coal terminology that I'm not yeah. familiar with, even though we do have coal mines here. Um, so, yeah, they're reclaiming all this land from coal uh, and putting um, solar panels on it and then charging people extra. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any thoughts on this? I mean, my, my thought is, you know, the typical, you know, it, it says it's, it's for as little as two bucks a month, but nobody uses 50 kilowatts a month. And my garden shed used more than that. You know, you're more likely to spend over $40 a month to have clean electricity. I mean, for that money, there's, I think there's places that will, you know, I mean, you can, sometimes you can, if, if they let you put solar on your roof, you can lease solar for your roof and for like the same price as electricity. You're not paying anything extra. And then eventually I think you make extra money. Yeah, it's going to be different in every province, state, every city. It's going to be different. I know around here there is... Well, you know, one or two solar cooperatives, and that's mainly for people who live in apartment buildings, so you don't necessarily have access to a roof that you can put solar panels on. So a bunch of people can get together and spend, you know, like $100,000 on a solar farm somewhere, and basically you live in an apartment, you can buy a share in that, and, you know, just everybody owns a piece of the action. And, you know, it feeds into the grid, and you get your benefit from, you know, your share of the thing. So... Um, yeah, whether this particular one makes any sense, I don't know, but, you know, certainly people should look into this, you know, in wherever they live. Well, shout out to Martinsburg, West Virginia and Mr. Mendez for, you know, thanks for writing us. We, we really appreciate it. So here's another one. Good evening, gentlemen. My name is Landon Ureski and I discovered your show earlier this year as listening material while taking our newborn for walks to fall asleep. Which is interesting, Brian, because I always wonder what people do, to, you know, when they listen to our shows. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember my first podcast in the very early days of podcasting in the early 2000s. Uh, somebody said that they listened to me on the subway in Australia and it blew my mind. It's like, wow, there's somebody yeah. doing that <laughs> to my little show. <laughs> like, wow. Um, yeah, commuting, of course, is a, is a popular thing. But taking your newborn out for walks to fall asleep. Hadn't thought of that one. Um, you know, and by the way, I listen to podcasts to fall asleep when I want to have a nap. I will sometimes ours. 
<laughs> it's not that they're boring. The more interesting they are, the more I can focus my mind on something and then drift off, right? They can't be too boring. That works for me too. Yeah, it's got to be something to focus my mind, yeah. So I have been listening weekly ever since, he says. The content is fantastic. And given I also live in the same city you do, I find all the commentary very relatable. Now, he says, I am a business owner. And that piqued my interest, Brian. So I Googled his name and I came up with his LinkedIn page and found out that he owns my favorite pot shop. <laughs> WID, W-I-I-D. It's actually on the other end of the city from me. Yeah. But they have a great online portal. Okay. And, you, you know, it's, they have a whole crap load of inventory of all kinds of different things. And you can order it and pick it up in your leaf, you know, your car. Fantastic. And little did I know that the pot shop that I'd been supporting supports green energy. That's that's great. And uh, it, <clears throat> we're always looking for sponsors. Uh, so another. Remember yeah, when we got the, free beer? <laughs> this, the, the, uh, the first plug is free. <laughs> funny. <laughs> Brian made a joke. <laughs> okay. So he's also a board member of the Saskatchewan Electric Vehicle Association, something I reference here a lot. And he says, so I'd love to use the insight on your show to help align my business with sustainable goals and get insight for the association. A fellow board member recently sent me this article I thought would be a great discussion point on your show. And it is from Airdrie today. Now, Airdrie is a little city north of Calgary, the big mega city of Calgary, Alberta. I wouldn't call it a mega city, but it's a big city, millions of people. And mm -hmm. he so says, the Rocky Mountains. I think it's a great discussion that could be had regarding NIMBYism, which is, I had to look that up, not in my backyard, ism. Uh, and FUD, you want to explain what FUD is again? Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. That is uh, things that people put around misinformation and bad information about new technologies to discourage either investment or adoption. And especially in this changing world that people are uncomfortable with how fast things are changing. The fact that that municipality rejected tens of millions in investment and permanent jobs due to false information is astounding. Keep up the good work. Now, the story is about somebody who wanted to pull up a charging station, much like we were talking about you know, because it's between two major cities, Calgary and mm -hmm. Edmonton. Uh, just like that corridor needs lots of charging with people going back and forth. Ours does between Regina and Saskatoon. And this town also ran into problems uh, because they didn't want anything to do with the charging station. Now, they claimed the problem with the charging station. I'll read you an excerpt, okay? It says, uh, this is from the story. Objections raised because <laughs> they wanted to put a solar installation with it, which is, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a business decision for them because it's the, you supply electricity for someone, you want the cheapest yeah. electricity wholesale, right? And that is what it is. So you build a little solar farm for your charging station, for your you know, highway supercharging station. And, but the objections raised were more to do with the solar than the EV chargers, apparently. It says objections raised included potential noise concerns with the cooling plant associated with the proposed solar farm. Uh, which is absurd. Yeah. Okay. Or, you know, a, a person's air conditioner in their home would, is, is less noisy than that. And it's certainly closer to people than that would be. Um, increased vehicular traffic on Highway 72. The, the, the solar farm would have increased traffic. I guess people going to see the solar farm or people <laughs> going to charge their EVs. Uh, next one, taking farmland out of production. This is something that is coming up a lot lately, which is, of course, crap. You know, if the farmer wants to take his damn farmland out of production, he can or she can. And you, you know, but you could also do mixed use. You don't, the farmers don't uh -huh. use every square inch of their land sometimes. Sometimes they have, you know, little bits of land that they mow with, you know, garden tractors that they could put up a huge installation on. Um, and some more speculative complaints about the potential radiation hazards of building such a facility in close proximity to people living in the area. Rocky View County, Alberta, you are officially the stupidest place on earth. So, um, is that like solar radiation? Like everyone's going to get a suntan? Is that what they're Brian, about? if I knew, <laughs> I'd be in pain. I just... <laughs> I mean, I, I, you think you've heard it all. You yeah. think you've heard all the stupidest 
things that where people get passed around on Facebook is just utter BS. And by the racist, you know, if you're stupid in one way, you're probably a racist too. <laughs> So screw you, Rocky View County, Alberta. Get off the planet. Go somewhere else. Elon's got a place for you on Mars. Lots of radiation up there. And Brian, I hope you're sitting down because we've got a rare voicemail clip from our SpeakPipe page. Can you believe it? What? <laughs> I cannot believe it. I thought that we should stop doing well, this. Well, it's crossed my mind too, but this is Sean in Ireland. Hi, it's Sean from Ireland, Dublin, Ireland. Just want to say, really love the show. I love listening to it every Wednesday when it comes out. There is two big announcements in Ireland in the last few weeks uh, regarding solar. It's your, there's no um, planning permission needed now if you have solar panels on your roof before. If you wanted plan uh, solar panels on your roof, you had to get planning permission. And there's been houses where people put up solar panels, didn't get planning permission and the government made them take them down. So now you don't need planning permission. And also they've announced that they are going to give schools free solar panels. So a school just applies and if they're suitable, they will get the price of the solar panels covered 100% by the government. Wow. Thanks. I mean, that's, that's crazy, fantastic. right? That's why, why isn't everybody doing that? We well, often ask questions like that. Schools, perfect place for solar panels, but giving them to them? I mean, and then what do they do with the savings? They have, they can put more money to music programs and educating your damn children. Yeah, I will say the high school right next to me where I went to high school, they've actually had solar panels on their wow. roof for about 20 years now. And it was because... I think some students and maybe a, a teacher or two were interested in the technology and they realized it was a good learning experience. So it was about 20 years ago, so it, they would have been much lower powered solar panels. And, and uh, But still, they've been generating power. And educating for, kids. For and they can probably years. look at the, uh, the, the doohickeys to see absolutely. what the, the sun is doing and, and probably be aware that solar panels generate electricity in cloudy days, for example. Yeah, and so also uh, the other thing Sean brought up is we got to get rid of the red tape involved in, in installing uh, solar, of you know, clean energy of all kinds. This is a climate emergency. We got to move fast. Uh, we got to make all this stuff. Now, as Sean, easy we're as so thankful that we said that we would uh, wish you a happy birthday on your birthday. So let us know when your birthday is, and if not, happy birthday in advance. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> I appreciate it. It's lovely yeah. to hear your voice, and we love to hear from you. Contact us at cleanenergyshow at gmail dot com or on Twitter or on TikTok. For now, uh, Clean Energy Pod is our handle there. And don't forget to check out our YouTube channel for special features. Leave us a voicemail like Sean did at speakpipe dot com slash clean energy show. And it's time for the lightning round. Brian, we have to whiz through this one quickly and it's a fat one. So it's going to be a challenge to get through. This is a fast paced look at the week in clean energy news. California becomes the first state to commit to ending the sale of polluting heaters. All fossil fuel heaters are gone by 2030. Not far from now, right? That's fantastic, and California often sets the tone for the rest of the U.S. on clean energy things. So, I hope clean energy Canada predicts 184,000 people will be employed in the Canadian EV industry by 2030, 26 times what there was in 2020. And you know, I think that number uh, is more than the number of people in oil and gas. So that's just the EVs. That's not clean energy in total. Yeah. That's just EVs. Oh, yeah. time for a fast fact. According to the IEA, the International Agen Energy Agency, the International Energy Agency, only 50% of the worldwide market is now using LED bulbs. Outraged, are you? Wow. Yeah, I mean, I guess that makes sense. It's, uh, you know, it does take a hell of a long time to change all the how many how many humans one does it take to change i could do the them all in the world? i'll There's start tonight come on people <laughs> unscrew those stupid uh incandescent bulbs and put in an led from your local dollar store because they're cheap 
And imagine how much energy well, you know, uh, will be saved once we do that. Those old bulbs don't last very long. So it doesn't, it shouldn't, it's not going to take that long. What are they, the last a year at best or something like that? Yeah. I mean, my kind, that's, it's not good. The Nord Stream pipeline, which is, uh, you know, the one that they claimed was bombed or sabotaged, it stopped leaking, but not before emitting the equivalent of what UK cars consume in a year. And there are 1.8 million kilometers of oil pipelines in the world. Some of them apparently leak. Yeah, so this is the pipeline between Russia and Germany, which has been the site of much discussion and problems um, in the UK war. But yeah, it, it um, this is a leaking, uh, and even just in your home, right? Like if you have a gas cooktop, that can leak and release pollutants and ruin the air quality in your house. And uh, you know, from Bloomberg, the United States utility scale solar is now about one third cheaper than gas fired power. Wow. Well, onshore wind is 44, 44% less expensive than gas fire. This is onshore wind, you know, which is notoriously more expensive yeah. than offshore wind. So solar and wind now present a deflationary opportunity for electric supply costs. Deflation, something I like to hear. Let's, uh, let's uh, hope you know, I watched this video by an engineer, a wind engineer. Uh, talking about how big can wind turbines get offline. It was very in-depth. It's very in-depth, but apparently yeah. there's a cost of diminishing <laughs> returns. But I might get to that in a bit. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> okay. Oh, another fast fact. In 2022, and 600 million people in Africa still don't have access to electricity. 600 million don't have any electricity. Wow. And I can go to the hardware store and buy a solar panel and power my camper and lights and stuff and phones. Much of those without power are in the Demo Democratic Republic of the Congo, the DRC, uh, Ethiopia, Nigeria, Tanzania, and Uganda. Research suggests that covering all of California's canals, which span roughly 4,000 miles, with solar panels could save up to 63 billion gallons of water. That's just... Putting them, people say, there's no place to put solar panels. You take up farmland, put them on the damn canals, yeah. save water. Billions of gallons of water. Yeah. And I believe they have, you know, started at least one pilot project. So that's what it would look yeah, like. Yeah, there's even some going all, on in Europe. Amazing. And they said, if you did that, you'd have like 13 nuclear reactors worth of uh, peak output. So that's pretty cool. 13 gigawatts. The two Chevy Bolt variants set a quarterly sales record at 14,700. Uh, GM says it will increase global production. This is interesting to me, so I'm following it to more than 70,000 units for the 2023 calendar year, which is almost double the 44,000 this year. So they, they're selling all the damn things and they've got to make more because, you know. Yeah. And presumably they've ramped up their battery supply, which is the other thing. So they, they presumably have enough and batteries And for the Regina that, Leader Post, great. our local newspaper, we have an oil ban. New York follows California in banning the sale of gas cars by 2035. That legislation is moving forward. So good to hear. Uh, world's largest wind-solar hybrid complex, this is wind and solar in one piece of land, uh, is now 600 megawatts, and it goes online in India. It's the largest hybrid complex, 600 megawatts. Fairly big. Toyota president calls meeting California zero emission requirements difficult, even though in 2035, you can still have 20% of your new car sales from your company be long range uh, PHEVs, uh, plug-in hybrids that use gas. Yeah. Well, it's not like Toyota's like a no, world no, leader no, in no, making cars. No, I don't know how they could possibly do it. They don't want to. Tesla Giga Nevada to receive recycled battery materials from Redwood's closed loop campus. That means, Brian, you could buy a Tesla and people would say, oh, where'd that battery come from? It was mined. Well, some of it might be recycled now already. And that's going to way go up in the future as more become available. That's great. Yeah, Redwood is one of the big players in battery recycling started by one of the founders of Tesla. But yeah, we were always worried about not having enough supply of, you know, batteries to recycle, but, uh, you know. It'll be a closed loop system come. one day. The Harris Ranch Tesla supercharger in California, uh, that is the big one. The first one, actually, 
uh, ever, and it's between San Francisco and Los Angeles, will have a 25 megawatt of solar installed. That is 2.5 times the solar farms they are putting in Saskatchewan. Okay, just for reference. At a very rural part of the I-5, 100 stalls, that's 100 stalls, uh, including uh, some for towing. They're going to have, you know, some stalls. People are calling for that now that the trucks are, are out. So it's a halfway mark between LA and the Bay Area. So, yeah, cool. The EPA is doubling money for electric school buses, which you mentioned earlier, due to overwhelming demand from all 50 states. Yeah. So the 50 states asked for money, and it was way more than they expected them to ask for. The state, the people, the school boards, the people, they want electric school buses. And they should, because diesel bad. Bad for kids. Currently, only 1% of the country's school buses are electric. And you know what? I'm a little surprised that it's even 1%. Like, that's that's more than maybe I want to thought. Yeah. And Brian, finally this week, I'm going to end on uh, uh, good news from Asad Razouk, which I sometimes do, and good news on the climate fight that we could all use this week. Uh, Ireland to put solar panels on every school. Okay, okay. Our caller already covered that, James. You didn't need to put that there. But yeah, India to that go 50% renewables by 2030. Some more India news. We have listeners in India. So they're going to go 50% renewals. Well, that's, that's not bad for a country that said that maybe we can't because we want the middle class to expand. And you guys have already had for 100 years yeah. and we're, we're a huge country. But, you know, things may be starting to move along there. That's our time for that's this great. week. Remember, cleanenergyshow at gmail.com. Uh, we really appreciate you listening. Please subscribe to the show so you get our shows every week. And we'll see you again next time, next week. See you next week.